Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Donkey Kong Country 3. In the previous episode, we explored the rest of Kremwood Forest, fought a giant eight-legged affront to Mother Nature, and got this sweet new ride. Before we take it for a spin, we need to make a quick pit stop. Come on, there we go. Because after we bought that shell at Bizarre General Store, you might have seen that he had something new to offer. Let's check it out, shall we? So, who owns the castle? Not sure which castle since we haven't seen one yet, but it'd be nice to see who owns it. Well, I ventured up there once, but if you want to know what I discovered, it'll cost you two coins. Oh, do tell. Well, once I got to the castle grounds, I saw a sign which said, Keep right off our land. So I ran off. I want my money back. Although, interestingly enough, if you turn them down, I'm saving for swankies. <laughs> Are you sure? Some cheeky lad called Link was in here just last week and he asked about the castle too. Didn't have enough coins, but he seems like such a nice fellow that I agreed to accept 500 rupees instead. And then he left, muttering about my shells being the wrong shape or something. Oh well. <laughs> Besides the obvious reference, that's specifically a reference to Link's Awakening, where uh, you could collect uh, a number of what were called secret seashells in the game that were used to unlock. Okay, well that the exact nature. That's a bit of a spoiler. I'm sure you could look it up if you wanted to. But nonetheless, it's a sneaky little reference. Although I gotta say, that particular incarnation of Link must have been loaded if he was willing to blow 500 rupees on that. To say no less of how he got here to begin with. Anyway, so this other crap can cross rocks. Specifically, the ones blocking this other suspicious looking beach. What do you know? A Simon Cave. Kong Cave. The Simeon Segway. <laughs> if you couldn't tell, every time we get a new vehicle, it tends to let us get a new, a new Simon Cave. But more importantly, we can cross these rocks to the north of Funky's Place now. Reaching the central section of the overworld, there's quite a bit to explore. We got some new areas. We got a little waterfall nestled up in the left side there. A strangely industrialized island, an unusual rock formation, waterfalls preventing our uh, access further along. But first, we want to check out this little cabin here. Bramble's Bungalow. Ah, hello there, Cogs. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Bramble, the famed botanist. The most beautiful flowers used to grow around here. They died back when those awful machines came. I'm sure he'd have a little more to say. Most of the bears do when you show up in their place a second time. I love plants, don't you? They're so beautiful. This picture reminds me of those I can't grow anymore. That specific red flower there, you want to keep that in mind for later. Although just past his house is a dead end. I'm sure something will come of that eventually, right? So, these two black flags with the K on them. Both uh, lead to new worlds. You can actually tackle these in either in any order you prefer. But personally, I prefer to go to this one first, Cotton Top Cove. First off, here is another one of the brothers bear, Blue and his beach hut. Hello there, Kongs. How are you? My name's Blue. Pleased to meet you. Afraid a little early for the party, Kongs. That's if anybody bothers to come at all. Oh, that's a really somber kind of place. We gotta pay him another visit. Maybe it'll keep his spirits up a little. You wouldn't have brought. Oh, I can see you haven't. Never mind. Oh, I feel really bad for the guy. Hope things turn around for him. But they're about to get a little better for us because up in this corner here, a Simon Cave is pretty much the only place they could have hidden one in this section of the overworld. In this. within Cotton Top Cove. Let's check out Bounty Bay. Bounty Blues. 
We hear it fits with our little friend over there. Maybe having some music named bathroom could help. Well, either way, we can't go any further into this world. So it looks like we gotta enter this deep water here. Venture into Baz's Blockade. It's just not a Donkey Kong Country game without water levels. And just as always, they're beautiful to look at. And the music in this one, this uh, in these levels in Donkey Kong Country 3 in particular, are rather sinister sounding. But partially sinister as well are the Bazes. These barracuda looking enemies come out of holes in the coral here. They're not actively hostile, they only hurt you if you touch them, but there are a lot of them in this level. And, by the way, things get a little easier for you if you happen to realize that all those advanced controls for controlling squawks also apply when you're swimming. So, the air dash, which I suppose is more of a uh, swip swim here, <laughs> along with the high jump, the short hop, and the fast fall, all apply here. Use them in conjunction as needed. To make things a lot easier here. That cocoa that was here left. Interesting. And so let's use the, uh, let's use those advanced techniques to our advantage here. Let's high jump above the bases here, short hop for the next one to come by, then fast fall out of range. Get these banana bunches much easier than before. There's another green cocoa le uh, leisurely swimming by. Careful here. They're gonna come down in patterns here. All bases come down in patterns in this level. You can figure out the pattern. It makes it much easier to get around. We're much closer together here, so let's just time this right. And to a very obviously placed bonus barrel. We got a coin to find here. We got some lurching to go around. Baz is in an up-down pattern. Up-down, you see them. And to be honest, that challenge is also a joke. It'll drop us off right next to where, uh, where we can go into the bonus area. And so, if you mess it up somehow, you can just try it again without having to brave those bases again. Two of them there. Now, four. That one always tricked me. Sometimes that third base will stagger itself a little after the second one. So we got more of them here. Let's just jump above this one. Wait for it. Wait for it. And there we go. By the way, I gotta really give a shout out to the music here. It just nails the tone of this. I mean, just give it a listen. Yeah, something else, isn't it? Now I've reached the star barrel here in the middle of this hairpin turn. And if you follow the bazes here, you can have a couple of barracoins in this little alcove they're swimming through. Careful. And there's the DK barrel we desperately need. If you haven't figured it out by now, Dixie Kong rules supreme in these underwater levels because her hitbox is smaller. Another four bazes. Speaking of hitboxes, the bazes themselves actually have a very narrow hitbox. It's just the bazes themselves, nothing above or below them. It's very nice. That'll come into play in just a moment. Let's go above these. Drop down here for a bear coin in this little area down here. Rise up above. Less time to react to these bats. It's still not that hard. And because the bats have narrow hitboxes, you can actually sneak above or below them in this larger passage, leading to... I'm sure you saw that coming, right? That's the baddies, but how are we supposed to do that underwater unless... You guessed it, an on-guard barrel. Nice to be in the form of the swordfish again. We got a bunch of red cocos to take out here that duck in and out of these, the duck in and out of the reef here. Quick pro tip: make sure you approach all of these cocos from the side, because although on guard stab attack reigns supreme, if you know how to use it, it's uh, it doesn't really cover him from above or below. Try to get too close to these cocos from uh, above or below them, and you're liable to get hit. And considering this bonus challenge is kind of tight on time anyway, you don't want to mess up. The good news is it does drop you off right next to where you go in, so still not much of a loss. Oh, and by the way, On Guard can also kill Bazes. Makes things a lot easier here. Well, sort of, not in these vertical sections. Because as mentioned already, he is particularly vulnerable uh, to getting hit from above or below because his uh, stab attack doesn't reach from there. And also keep in mind that he does time, tend to lunge at stuff out of instinct, so be extra careful. Oh, and if you happen to miss that bonus barrel, you'll find an on-guard barrel right here. Yep. So onward here. Nothing too difficult, just time it right to get past these bases. All those advanced controls for uh, swimming around a little more easily normally 
don't apply to On Guard, unfortunately. Not the Swift Swim, nor the... I should mention, that thing up there was called a Bounty Bass. It behaves just like a booty bird, just in the water. If you stab it, it gives you stuff. Not the Swift Swim, nor the High Jump, nor the Short Hop or a Fast Fall work when you're in the form of On Guard. He moves a little faster when he stabs, but aside from that, all you got is his usual movement, which is generally better than when you're controlling a Kong, so there is that. And past that last blockade of Bazes, we have a no On Guard sign. He leaves us the G. And what do we have here? We exit the reef and enter a very cool looking cave. There's the flag, but wait a minute. You remember the one thing we couldn't find in that underwater section, right? How are they supposed to stick a coin and a way to kill him? In an area where we couldn't pick up a barrel. So let's relieve this that let's relieve this coin of his coin. The only real puzzle in this level is remembering to check for one. And here we go. Underwater levels out of the way, we can finally start ascending the cliffs. And ladies and gentlemen, you're about to meet my favorite level type in the entire game. Here we have the waterfall levels. Just everything they do here, the music, the design over all the aesthetics, it just all clicks perfectly. It's just great. And here we have a crimp and now a new enemy, the crumple. Running, uh, attacking them normally or trying to jump on them with Dixie only makes him angry. Unfortunately, he kind of warns you ahead of time, so he won't actually hurt you from doing that until you do it twice, within a short interval. Then you can still Goomba Stomp him with Kitty. See ya. Here we have, not a rocket barrel, but a booster barrel. They uh, fly up away, so four firing you out of them. Very helpful for ascending the vertical, uh, verticalness, that is, these waterfalls. And as you saw, another neat little trick is you can actually go in front of or behind the waterfalls based on where the platforms are. It's just like those feed sacks in Doorstop Dash, except cooler. Upward, let's see what's over to the left here. Yep, it's a bear coin. This music is so freaking cool! And I should mention, oh wait, actually first I should mention, if you check off to the right here, we have a neat little... I missed? Um, there we go. A neat little stretch with some blast barrels and some goodies to be found that resembles a similar section in, I believe, Cannon's Claim in Donkey Kong Country 2. Obscure little shout-out is obscure, if it, you know, was meant to be a shout-out. So here, we gotta negotiate some booster barrels. There's a K, there's a buzz to not hit. There's another crimp waiting for us. He's still not all that tough. And a hidden barrel. I actually didn't know that was there. I literally just found that just now. <laughs> Every time you play this game, you learn something new. Got some buzzes to avoid here. Hold off on this first one or you'll get hit. Go over them the second time. Careful. No, shouldn't have hesitated there. We'll have to wait. There we go. Go up here. There's another crimp. You kind of see that one coming, didn't you? Couldn't you? Here we have another, cr another crumple. Goomba stomp. And just to the right of this, we have a not so cleverly hidden barrel coin. Barrel cannon. Up to the blast barrel. Over to this cliff off to the left. Dodge this buzz. There's another crimp. Goodbye. Let's roll jump over here to find the O. And an, an interestingly placed knickknack. Two, three, bonus barrel. We have some stars to collect here. This one's not all that hard. Just follow the booster barrels up, follow the stars, and make sure you don't miss these ones camouflaged amidst the cliff face. Definitely don't, because you are actually very pressed for time here. One more. There's the bonus coin. Since this one drops you off a little past where the bonus barrel itself is, it's a bit of a pain to get back to. There's a dead crimp. And I really haven't acknowledged the music enough in this game. It's, it's a really, a really well done soundtrack. I mean, that's a given for Donkey Kong Country games. And here's a fun fact. Aside from the fact that you can go back here to nab a bear coin behind the waterfall, everyone associates David Wise with the Donkey Kong Country trilogy. I mean, you know, he is kind of a musical genius. But... This game actually mostly wasn't written by him. Uh, the, the music wasn't mostly written by him. Much of Donkey Kong Country 3's soundtrack was actually written by one of his associates, Evelyn Fisher. Actually known nowadays as Evelyn Novakovich, if I remember right. Uh, forgive me if I mispronounced that. Uh, vaguely Eastern European style surnames aren't really my linguistic forte. Oh, there you are, Perry. We're going to be escorting Perry the Parallel Bird through most of the rest of this level. 
We want to take these jumps a little higher to avoid getting him hit by a buzz, as per usual. Dixie Kong is much more useful with that because of her helicopter spin. Let's time this a little right. Up, time this right. There we go. Another enemy. Another crimp. They just like attempting and failing to ambush us here. There we go. Let's check off to the right here for a hold on a minute. Let's get the right Kong to take out this crumple. Oh, if you hadn't noticed, this time is just right. That's not right! Well, hopefully we run into another crimp so we can show that off. There we go. Upward. Another buzz to avoid. Two of them. A no parry sign, leaving us a three up for taking such good care of him. I'm gonna go off to the right here, actually bypass this booster barrel because there's a bonus barrel waiting for us. Another star challenge. It's actually a pity I got I had Kitty Kong get hit because he's much helpful here because for once, his bigger hitbox is actually a blessing rather than a curse. He's much better at collecting all these stars. You don't need nearly as many trips through the booster barrels to get these. There we go. Got half of them now, actually two-thirds of them. Just keep following along here. You can see just how less, much less practical Dixie is at getting these. And that actually took eight more seconds than it did with Kitty in my practice run. Such a shame. Drops us off just by the G, only a short distance above. Time this jump just right so you don't get hit by that buzz. And we've reached the summit of the falls. Well, sort of. There's a steel keg over here and you know what that means. Yep. But this puzzle is actually a little trickier than previous ones because there's, uh, no wall. But that doesn't mean you're not without a way to take care of this. Step back here. Throw the steel keg at a high arc to make it... That's not a high arc. Stupid controls not working when I want them to. Of course it was the controls' fault. It wasn't mine. Let's throw the steel keg at a high arc. To... That's not right either. Come on, me. Throw this at a high arc. I'll get it right one of these days. If you notice here, you can actually get it... Uh-oh. Uh, okay, booster barrel. Thank you. Don't fall here, folks. Throw it at a high arc, then jump in the, uh, the blast barrel, send you over to the other side, and see a coin. Maybe I didn't get to show that thing that I could have showed with the crumble. I'll just have to show it in the next rocket. Next waterfall level. Let's not speak too fast here. Hey, look, a flag. And now we've just about reached the top of the cove. Let's pay, let's, yeah, let's pay Wrinkly a visit. What do you ever seem to do in these games is shoot on this or jump on that? Why don't they make games about knitting? Honestly, Wrinkly, with all the games out there nowadays, I wouldn't be surprised if there was one. 31% through already and just over an hour through the levels. This is actually very nice. Yeah. Bump into Cranky, tell him to stop wasting his money on Swanky's bonus games. Well, I don't know if I can get him to stop, but I can certainly give him second thoughts about doing it after beating him again. There's Swanky's tent over there, but... Of course, we got a lake up here. And as it seems in this uh, northern hemisphere, with the lake be with the lake comes... Our third and finer p final peer level, Creeping Clasps. Don't the Kremlings know Redwood's kind of a protected species? I doubt they care. A couple things to do involving team throws here just from the start. Crack open a, a path to a bear coin here. Throw Dixie up to where a one-up awaits. And I gotta say, is it just me or, or uh, is there something a little off about this level? The wood's a strange color, the water looks a little chemically altered. Oh, wouldn't you know it, there's a nibbla. And to make matters worse, Time to meet the eponymous. Where are they? Clasps. They look a little similar to the knock as we've run into before. But they're running around on ropes. And they, uh, you can probably tell by now, but these little bastards are running around in TNT barrels. Don't get hit. Trust me, just don't. Luckily, these clasps move in predictable patterns. So you can avoid them as needed. And speaking of predictable patterns, these buzzes are clearly guarding a bonus barrel. Grab 15 bananas with this one. Fortunately, no clasps here, just a couple ropes to move around on. Remember your rope controls, this isn't all that hard at all. Just whatever you do, don't fall, because I mean, you see that nibbler. Eight. Well, I'm running out of things to talk about here. Um, uh, nice weather we're having, there's not very many clouds, there's barely a cloud in the sky, you can even see the mountains back there, it's picturesque, ain't it? I can't even talk about the weather without tripping up. 
What does that say about me? So we have more clasps to get hit by. Hey, a one up. I'll take that as compensation as long as I don't get hit here. The trick to these multiple clasp stretches is to find kind of a rhythm to go in. Speaking of clasps, actually, if, you, uh, if you've ever kind of mucked around in unused content before, especially for this game in particular, you can find out something interesting. There was, in fact, planned originally to be a ground-based version of the clasp called the Kraka. They were uh, basically going to behave just like a knocker, except they blew up if they touched you, just like the Kaboons in Donkey Kong Country 2. And just as with, whoa, just as with them, if you pick them up, they function just like TNT barrels, since they're, you know, hold it out in one. One of those things that were fully planned, fully sprited out on everything, and I guess they just didn't find a place to put them. Except in the Game Boy Advance port, where they did sneak into one of the uh, uh, extra levels new to this game, new to that game. Here we have a bit of a tricky thing. We gotta get down there, because you see there's something down there. This time and right, there's a blast barrel sending us to a bonus barrel, but we don't have to brave that nibbler to reach. You can try it if you're feeling gutsy, but you'll probably get hit. Let's find this coin. And wouldn't you know it, claps to get around. But remember, just find a rhythm, just time it right, and you're solid. Dixie's helicopter spin, of course, helps if you want to cheese it. There's a the bonus coin. Alrighty. There's one more cobble. Recoil. More clasps to avoid. That buzz is going to make things a little more complicated. Can't just helicopter spin all the way over. The G. Another clasp. Careful. Two of them here. One. Recoil. Three of them. A couple more clasps to avoid. Careful. And here's the coin. And here's a unique sprite. And there's the flag. But wait a minute, we're not done here. Because we gotta take out that coin. And grab that. There's nothing up here? Huh, thought there was. We gotta grab this steel keg and do something with it. Let's jump over here. Fortunately, there's no niblet down there. They're a little forgiving if you accidentally fall in the water. There's the DK coin, and now we can end this. I dare say we made quite a bit of progress. Water worlds tend to be kind of a slog in most games, but not this one. We've already reached the cotton top of Cotton Top Cove. And next time on Let's Play Donkey Kong Country 3, we get to go all the way back down.